Welcome to Surviving the Mom Years, a video series dedicated to the beautiful chaos we call motherhood, interviewing real moms and talking about real issues. Okay. Hi, everybody, and welcome to the ne next episode of Surviving the Mom Years. I am so excited tonight. My coworker and friend, Tony, is joining me. Um, and, you know, this is this interview came around very organically. She actually watched our my first interview with Jess and made a comment that she has a son with severe allergies. Um, turns out around the same time, I was going through it with my twin boys. And after an allergist appointment, I reached out to Tony and said, hey, do you want to go live with me <laughs> and talk about what it's like to be the parent of children with severe food allergies? So welcome, Tony. Thank you. Thank you very much. Hello. So I, first question is really simple. When and how did you discover your son had a food allergy? Um, so Levi is, he's 10 now. And um, we discovered that he had allergies when he was about eight or nine months old. I don't remember the exact date. Um, we kind of, there were a lot of signs pointing to food allergies leading up to that. We just didn't know that those signs were pointing there. <laughs> so right. It was at that age that I finally took him to an allergist um, and got him diagnosed. Um, however, he, you know, he was my second child. Um, he was a very fussy baby, um, which, you know, was something that I, you know, didn't have with number one, but every child is different. So it was, you know, I didn't really think it was that abnormal. Um, he had a lot of like, a lot of health stuff going on. He had repeat ear infections. Um, so we were at the doctor all the time. I feel like like every two to three weeks we were back at the pediatrician. He had ear infections. He had acid reflux. Um, so, you know, we were doing the antibiotics for the ear infections. We were doing um, this medication for his acid reflux. He had eczema on his skin. <clears throat> and, um, you know, he'd get really red and blotchy. I actually thought it was like baby acne. So again, you know, I didn't worry too much about that. We were doing all these like organic lotions and, you know, things. So we were treating all of these symptoms that he was having. Um, and then he also had asthma. Um, so he was doing breathing treatments. Um, so just a, just a really, just a lot of stuff. Um, he was nursing and he was, um, he, he loved to nurse. All my kids did, but he was just on the boob all the time. Um, you know, just, he was just fat thing, you know? And so <laughs> he, was, <laughs> he was, he was huge. Um, and, you know, when he was sleeping, he was fine. When he was eating, he was fine. But, you know, he just, he just was unhappy a, a lot. And he's like discontented. Like you just tell he was always like he was nursing because with my boys, you know, my boys have the allergies too. Chris was always nursing. Like it was comfort nursing. And I think now I realize he was just not feeling good. That's exactly what it was. Like he was comfort nursing a lot. And, and, and the ironic part about that is it was my milk that was making him not feel well. And so, and he was just constantly eating. Um, I remember taking him um, into work while I was on maternity leave. So he was, you know, under six weeks at this point. Um, and a friend of mine that I worked with, um, she had a daughter who was born the year before him and she had a milk allergy. And I remember being a little bit embarrassed when I brought him in because his face was really red and blotchy. And again, I thought it was baby acne. Um, and she said to me, she said, um, his skin kind of resembles the way Maddie's looked when, you know, she was a baby and, you know, th that was her milk allergy that was causing it. I really didn't think much of it because again, he was so little at this point. Um, but that was kind of my first like intro to allergies. And it kind of went in one ear and out the other, but I remember, I remembered it. Mm -hmm. um, and you know, again, I was just like, oh, yeah, I think it's just baby acne, you know, I, he, he's okay. Um, but yeah, then he proceeded to continue to be sick a lot. Um, and the way we found out about his allergies was um, he was, he was shirtless. I had put him down on my living room floor, which was connected to our kitchen. I was in the kitchen, um, like cleaning up, doing some stuff. And I was eating some nuts at the time. And I went and picked him up off the floor and I didn't notice anything right away. Um, but I, of course I wasn't looking for it. Um, but after a few minutes, I'm, I'm looking at him and he has all these red dots all over his like chest and stomach. Right. And 
my initial thought was, oh my gosh, I put him down on the carpet with no shirt on and something bit him, you know, bit him up. I thought it was a spider or something that bit him. So I took him to the bathtub, put him in there, you know, kind of washed them all up and the dots went away. And I thought, well, that was weird. Um, but mm. I was like, eh, you know, it kind of worried me a little bit. Again, we were at the doctor all the time. So I think when I went back, I was like, hey, this thing happened. And, you know, she was kind of like, oh, I'm sure it was no big deal. If, if it went away, don't worry about it. And the thing is, like, when you're a parent and you have little ones, there's always something. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Like, there's eight zillion things and they're sensitive and their skin is new. Because Chris, like, I remember he had eczema on his ankles. Oh. And I was just like, oh, you know, it's just adjusting to the environment, sensitive skin. Maybe yeah. it's the detergent. Like, it never yeah. dawned on me that my <laughs> breast milk was making him sick. Like, it didn't even, I didn't even think oh. it was my breast milk. And 10 years ago food allergies really weren't very prevalent. So it wasn't something that you were hearing about a lot. It wasn't something that the pediatrician brought up to me in his visits ever, um, you know, and and I think that, you know, now it's become more and more prevalent. I think they look for that more now when they're seeing, you know, some of those signs. Um, and I learned later that eczema, asthma, and allergies all go hand in hand. So all of those things can be linked. So those are good signs, you know, if one maybe look for the other. And he was also your second. So that's the thing too. Like my daughter, you, your eldest is a girl and my eldest is a girl. And like my daughter had no issues. So I didn't even think they're like, oh, there's a genetic component to it. I'm like, no one has allergies. Like my partner's allergic to cats. (laughs) So it didn't even cross my mind. Yeah. I actually, I don't even know that I ever knew anybody that had food allergies so it really was not on my radar at all right so you know so so I so that happened um and then it was just a few weeks later like the exact same scenario happened and at that point I kind of made the connection that I had been eating nuts both times um at at that point in time I was like eating really healthy so nuts was like my go-to snack Mm -hmm. um so I, I kind of was like, okay, there's got to be something to the fact that I'm, you know, eating these nuts and picking him up. Um, so I made an appointment with this pediatrician and I took him in and I explained the whole thing to her. And of course, I already had my own theories in mind when, you know, when I went in, we diagnosed our kids before we ever see. Right. <laughs> Thank you, Google. <laughs> what could this be? <laughs> you know, and Again, because food allergies weren't, you know, there just wasn't a lot of information at that time about it. Um, she didn't really say like, oh yeah, that's that's what it is. She was sort of like, well, you know, you could take them to see an allergist and have them tested. You know, I don't, again, I think that if it went away after you bathed him, you know, it's probably nothing to worry about. So I just sort of took it upon myself and I made him an appointment um, and to go see an allergist and that's when they did the prick test on his back. So they test him for all, you know, all the, all the major food allergies and environmental allergies, um, test him for all of that. And it turned out he was allergic to peanuts, tree nuts, milk, soy, and sesame. Whew. Yeah. So, (laughs) so, um, you know, his peanut, where she tested for the peanut, swelled up more than than the rest of the allergens. So she said, I kind of have a suspicion that his peanut allergy is elevated, um, but we can confirm that with blood work. Um, but based on the size, because it was like triple the rest of them, she said, I think, you know, I think he's got a pretty severe allergy. So in the meantime, you're going to want to keep him away from peanuts until we can- Did you, know, you get an EpiPen at that point too? I don't, I, I mean, we couldn't get the EpiPen there. And again, this is 10 years ago. So I'm right, like, it's, it's different I'm digging, now. I'm digging deep. <laughs> um, <laughs> so I think she, she said, she gave us the prescription and we were able to get it filled, you know, fairly quickly. Um, we took him also relatively quickly to get his blood work. Um, and it came back that his peanut allergy was really elevated. Um, and so she explained to us what that meant. And it was really scary. You know, she said, um, he's at the level where if he ingests peanuts, he's going to go into anaphylactic shock. And, you know, she explained all that to us. And, you know, basically, if, if you're not prepared, um, and you 
don't have your EpiPen and your Benadryl um, and something were to happen, then, you know, he could stop breathing and he could die. So, you know, she, she explained all of that. <laughs> yeah. It was, it was, it was a lot, it was a lot to take in for sure. Um, but she explained all that to us. I was really grateful that, um, you know, cause she knew I was nursing and that was something that, you know, I just loved. I mean, I just absolutely loved nursing my children and it's, it wasn't something that I wanted to give up. Um, and so she could have judged me and said, you know, put them on a formula that he can have, but she said, if you want to continue to nurse, you're going to have to cut all of that out of your diet. Um, right. and I was like, okay, I'll do it. Whatever um, I need to do. Yeah. Uh, like, so I cut out, I mean, like no cheese, no milk, no eggs. No, I mean, I was basically eating meat, vegetables. Um, like I couldn't have any packaged food cause everything has soy in it. Um, so it was right. like my uh, my one son has a soy. So I've got one who has a dairy and one who has a soy, and then one who has a wheat, and then they both are severe egg and severe peanut. Like the peanut and the egg would send them into anaphylactic, most likely. We don't know for sure because we're in the be we're where you were ten years yeah. ago. We're like in the beginning in the testing. Yeah, and the allergist exact words were we're playing with dynamite. Like, we don't want to test them, like, give them peanut butter until we do a lot more blood work and a lot more testing. Like, the giving them peanut butter is down the road because based on their numbers, it could be mild or we could have anaphylactic. So, yeah. And, and at 10 years old, Levi has still never been tested because his numbers haven't come down to where he can actually have the peanut test. Really? Really, Yeah. So, so how often do you go to the allergist? Is it every two years or? Um, I try to go before every new school year. Um, mm -hmm. I'm sure I've probably missed a couple years because we've just gotten so used to our routine that right. it doesn't really, you know, it's not hurting anything to have him not be eating peanuts. He's not missing it at this point. He's never had it in his, you know, in his life. Right. Um, so you know, I do try uh, once a year, you know, before school starts, but I was getting like really um, like deflated that the results were not coming back better. Like they were actually getting worse, um, you know, several times around. I thought I'm not even going to take them back because I don't even. <laughs> is there, I mean, is there a point, and I don't know the answer to this, maybe you don't either, but like, is there a point where they're like, all right, at this age, it's not going to get better. Do you know? No, she actually told us very early on that. At the level he was at, he there was a good chance he would never outgrow it, and he would just be allergic to it his entire life. So we knew that from the beginning. Right. Um, but then we have met so many people who have outgrown peanut allergies that I think we started to give ourselves a little like false hope. Um, but so far, no, no, he's not. It's, it's not. It's not looking good. <laughs> so yeah. poor so, Levi. But you're not alone because this is. I mean, there is peanut allergies are more prevalent than I ever realized, which surprises me because, you know, once you find out your kid has a peanut allergy, you are reading every label, right? I mean, every label of everything. So it surprises me that so many things still have peanut exposure in them, knowing that there are hundreds of thousands of kids who have a peanut allergy yeah. and it is life-threatening. Mm -hmm. It is not hives. It is anaphylactic it's crazy. So how did you feel like when you got that initial diagnosis and the doctor told you it was, it was that dangerous, you know, what was your first gut response? Do you remember? Uh, it, I mean, it was scary. Yeah. Um, but I, I don't know. I think I, I felt grateful actually, because, you know, I'm sitting there thinking we went to Texas Roadhouse, like, you know, last month and he was sitting at the table with me and, you know, he was young. So we didn't give him any peanuts, but I almost did. Like I almost let him try it. <laughs> right. Like, it, so, oh. yeah. So, you know, I mean, and he had like the rolls and, you know, stuff and any of that stuff could have been cross contaminated with right. peanuts. And so I felt grateful that we knew and that we were like, you know, at least now we knew how to move forward and how, you know, how to deal with it. Um, and I got a lot of good positive feedback from the allergist uh, because they deal with all sorts of parents. And, you know, I think she's used to being 
the one or, you know, she was used to being the one of, of like having to tell the parents, like, you need to do this, you need to do this. It's really important. You know, it's, it's, it's life or death. And where I'm the one like, oh, I'm doing this and I'm doing that. And I'm like, <laughs> I'm the same way. I'm, the doctor actually told me, he's like, you know, you can give them like a little soy. And I was like, I haven't given them anything. Like they have, they have been gluten-free, soy-free, dairy-free. And he's like, they're, they're just sensitive. They're not like severe allergies to those. What he, what did he say? Cause my partner and I went together and you know, James. So for those who don't know, James works with Tony and I, like I work, I live with my partner. So whew, we spend a lot of time together but you know how he is. He is very much like, I'm the, I don't want to say anal retentive, but probably the best word for me. And he is the one who's like, they'll be fine. They'll be fine. Mm -hmm. And the doctor goes, so you're telling me they've never had ice cream. And I was like, no, no, my kids, have, the blood work said there was a dairy allergy. And he said, yogurt. Nope. He said, what did you give them for their birthday? Did they get cake? I was like, nope. They said egg allergy. I've not given them anything. <laughs> I, so I'm like you. And he ex he told me the um, soy egg or the soy dairy and wheat, little bits. You know, don't like overflow their system, but give yeah. it a little bit. But he said, do not touch the egg or the peanut. Yeah. But yeah. I remember feeling relieved for the answers because like you, my um, one son, Jimmy, had the never ending ear infection. Actually, we ended up in the ER because his fever wouldn't go down. And it turns out after two rounds of antibiotics, he had an antibiotic resistant ear infection and his fever would not go down. And of course, everything happens Saturday nights. This never happens on a Tuesday at 9 a.m. So um, he had the ear infections. Chris had the acid reflux and the eczema. And so I felt like you and I found out I was relieved. Yeah. But then. It's they're, scary too. It's scary. And they're home with me right now. You know, I have a nanny who comes to the house and watches them and she's very conscientious. We've done EpiPen training with everyone in the house. But then I'm thinking about sending them to daycare next year. Mm -hmm. And that's got me a little nervous. I'm a little apprehensive about that. And I know daycare is peanut free, but the egg for them, we knew the egg allergy. So the peanut, we found out, because of the egg allergy, we gave them scrambled eggs and hives, like their faces, their mouths, everything. And I felt really bad because a little piece of egg fell down one of their diapers. And we didn't know. I mean, they're, they're eight months old and there's egg everywhere. It's in their hair. It's on. So we immediately get it off because they start the minute they touched it, they broke out, not even eat. Well, that little egg fell down the diaper and we went to change the diaper and it was like an open welt where the egg just touched the skin and it was just scrambled eggs. So that for us, the peanut scares me, but I haven't seen any effects of the peanut. It's the egg that really gives me a, because I've seen that it caused a sore just from contact. I can't even imagine what would happen if they, you know, they, they did eat a little bit and they did break out really bad. But like if they were to get worse, what would happen? Yeah. So it, it is, it's, it's scary for sure. Um, it's easier when they're at the infant age because you have all the control. <laughs> right, right. So tell me what it was like when your son went to school, like how did you manage that? Did, what did you do to prepare him and yourself when he was in kindergarten? So he was, he was always in daycare as well. Um, okay. So he, you know, he went from daycare and he went to a daycare center. They were really good about, you know, the allergies. He, I think, was the only child who had a food allergy for a while. But then as he got older, I think, you know, there were, you know, there were some others. So they, you know, I, I, I talk to everybody that's going to be with him when he was younger about how to use the EpiPen, what he's allergic to. Um, when he started school, I just make a point to, you know, never miss the open house. I always go to open house. I always stay after and I always have a conversation with his teachers about his allergy. Um, and I explain, you know, I, you know, I give them the introductory, this is what's going on. He's allergic to peanuts, um, severely, um, you know, the nurse has an EpiPen in her office and, you know, I give them the whole rundown of, you know, he knows not to take food from friends at lunch. Um, he, you know, I'll, I'll pack his lunch to make sure he has, you know, safe things to eat. Um, we used, I used to have the conversation about 
treats being sent in the class. So if people send treats in for birthdays, he cannot have those, period. I, I don't care what the circumstance is. I will send treats in for him and you can keep them in your desk drawer. And when it's time to celebrate a birthday, you just let him pick one of those out. And so I always did those things. That's a good idea. That's like, I feel like that's something that I'm going to take from this conversation. Yeah, so his school district actually um, stopped allowing homemade treats to be brought in. So now anything that gets sent in has to be store-bought, which is, which is a lot better because then, you know, the food labels are there. Right. Um, again, now he's older. So I have, you know, I have become more lenient as he's gotten older because he can help manage his allergy, which is awesome, you know. Um, but, and then I always followed up after talking to the teachers with an email. I'd say, I'll send you an email with some more details. So in the email, I would outline everything. <laughs> I would, oh, <laughs> I just know this from working with you. So again, you know, Tony and I work together. Tony is, I love it. It's like, I almost want to call her bullet point Tony, <laughs> it's like, which is great. It's so good. And I love that that carries over into your personal life. And it's not just like professional. You're so on it all the time. So, um, so I would, you know, I'd outline everything and I would always go online and find a food label of something that you wouldn't expect to have peanuts in it that has peanuts in the ingredient. And usually you can find some kind of crackers or something like a cheese cracker and you'll look on the ingredients and sure enough, there's peanuts listed in the ingredients. Um, and so I like to send a couple of examples of please read food labels and this is why. <laughs> Right. <laughs> and, you know, and, and then I would also ask them to, to forward it on to all of the other teachers he comes into contact with for gym, music, you know, all of that. So, you know, everybody is at least hearing it. Um, when he was younger, I did have some t-shirts made on custom ink that say no peanuts for me. And I would have him wear that to school, like on the first day. And then every couple of weeks, just as a reminder, because I don't want to genius. <laughs> oh my gosh. Everyone watching this, hold the presses. That is genius. No peanuts for me. Yeah. And um, <laughs> and so, you know, I'd have him do that. And because I don't want, you know, I don't want to be the mom that's constantly, you know, bragging on people like, oh, he can't, you know, you need to do this or he can't do this. I just want those little subtle reminders because I know that when you don't have a child that has a peanut allergy and it's not on your mind every day, you know, you, you forget. Right. And that even happens with family, like with grandparents and stuff. You know, my my parents, they know he has um, a peanut allergy and, you know, they know how severe it is. And they've taken him to Dairy Queen and forgot his EpiPen bag. And I'm like, no, like, no, you cannot right. do that. You cannot do that. that was the biggest so. thing the allergist said. She's like, wherever you go, there are EpiPens. And because I have twins and, you know, I think that makes it not like, I want to say harder, but oh, it's just harder. <laughs> like if they're going in different directions, like if her, if Chris is going with dad and Jimmy's going with Amy and I'm like, okay, you got your EpiPens. I got like, and we already have eight EpiPens that are spread out like in different diaper bags and in different things. And yeah. then someone told me the other day, expiration dates, my aunt, Aunt Tracy, shout out to you, Aunt Tracy, if you're watching this, she watches all of these. So I know she's one of my seven watchers. Um, Aunt Tracy said, check the expiration dates. And I was like, I didn't, like, I wouldn't have even thought of that. Yeah. So, um, yes, they do have expiration dates. And so what I've heard, um, and of course I'm not a medical professional and, you know, this is just something that, that I heard, um, is that they stay good. So the expiration date is printed right here on this black spot. I don't know if oh, look at you prepared. Thank you, Tony. Yes. So, um, I try to keep mine rotated out, you know, to be within their expiration date, but I always save the most recently expired EpiPens and I will put them um, in places where they won't be my first go-to, like maybe a grandparent's house, um, maybe in the car or, oh, you know, yeah. at, in my purse, somewhere that, you know, it's not going to be my first go-to, but in a crisis situation, having it's an better than nothing EpiPen is better than having no EpiPen at all. Um, so I've heard they're good for about six months after their expiration date, but that is not like medical information. That's right. just like this disclaimer. This is just <laughs> hearsay, but a recommendation from a mother. Yes. Medical yes. disclaimer. No one sue us. I have yes. no money anyway. So 
please don't even think about it. Like if you can take my credit card debt, but yeah, so, um, that's good to know because I didn't even think, you know, right now they're infants. I control everything. But once they start spending weekends at grandma's house, we're going to need EpiPens everywhere. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Have yeah, you yeah. ever had to use one? I have not. We've been very, we've been very lucky. Um, we've never right. had to use one and they're so expensive and it kills me. <laughs> I know. Well, Every you know, thankfully, thank God, hopefully you never have to use it. You know, I pray to God you never have to. Um, but the price recently went down, at least with our insurance, because, you know, we have the same insurance. Um, I did get them for my kids. It was pretty inexpensive, which was nice. Yeah. So when, so on my old insurance plan, it was high deductible. So I pretty much paid out of pocket for them. They're not on my insurance from work right now. I actually have them on a health sharing plan because it's, okay. it's cheaper. Um, so I, again, I'm paying out of pocket for them. They're like, I don't know, like $700 or something crazy like that. Um, <laughs> I mean, they do put out coupons, so don't ever pay full price because EpiPen puts out coupons. There's um, there's an app called GoodRx, and sometimes you can get coupons on there as well. Um, so we always do save like a few hundred dollars, but it's still very expensive. And then I end up throwing them away, which I'm glad to throw them away, but still, you but know. Yeah. And painful. if you're in the pharmaceutical industry and you're watching it, this is total BS that you charge people that for something they need to survive not cool like if you're in the pharmaceutical industry you hear me do something about it yeah and there was one point in time where um the epipens got recalled and you couldn't get them like you couldn't i'm like what what are we supposed to do so i, oh. think, I think we ended up going with um some other brand of epinef epinephrine um which was probably mm -hmm. fine but i really wanted my epipens and right they, they weren't available. They weren't available. Just and they stock told them on Benadryl. <laughs> yeah. And they said to discontinue the ones that you had at home because, you know, during the recall. So it was real, that, that was really, I was like, I was really upset about that. But, but yeah. we've got, you've gotten through it and, and he's 10 and like, he's made this far, never had one. Thank goodness. So I, should, I lost track of my questions. I was so in this for the moment. I have to oh, pull I, my questions. I have been down. <laughs> Bullet point, Tony. Yes. It's so funny. James was like, you're having an interview with AP today? And I was like, yes. <laughs> okay. Um, okay. So I think, okay. The only one I have, well, we're going to, I've got, we're coming kind of like, we're coming to the, over the hump of questions. Do you see the cat tail behind me? <laughs> plus, plus I'm doing an interview. Um, have you or birthday parties? Okay, so birthday parties stress me out. And like, you're not even going to birthday parties, but that's not a school setting. You're going to someone else's house. Did you stay with your son for the first couple of years to make sure no one slipped him anything? How did you manage birthday parties? So um, I always stayed with him at birthday parties when he was younger, yes. He probably, he was probably eight before I would actually leave him at a party, but that seemed to be just how it went. Very it's huge. it's not like when we were kids and your parents would just drop you off with strangers and, and leave. Like a lot of parents stay at birthday parties. So I actually didn't have, a, you know, okay. a lot of struggle with that. Yeah. So I wouldn't worry That's too, too much about that one, unless you're like looking for some free babysitting and you, <laughs> you want to drop I your like kids you. off and Totally overprotective mom. To and that's, what I was, a I don't, I guess I have that anxiety about being that mom who is that, you know, who shows up, who's like, I'm just going to like stay here if you don't mind. Like, I don't need to drink or eat anything. I just need to like keep an eye on that kid because, or kids. No, I mean, that's not, that's not the experience that I had with, okay. with, with my kids as, as they were, you know, going, going through all that. So it, that really wasn't, you know, it really wasn't bad. Um, okay. <laughs> that makes me feel better. Yeah. But I mean, I have, you know, we have done play dates and things where I am leaving him with people and, you know, it is, it's really scary. It's really hard at first. It gets easier, but it's really scary because, you know, you have to try to find the balance in not scaring people 
so that they don't want to take your kid because you know yeah when you're telling them hey if he eats the wrong thing you know he could stop breathing and you're gonna have to stab him with this pen to you know bring him back to life and call 911 and you know it's it's a lot so you know I I always try to prepare people um to take him and and remind them and um I like to, I like to talk about, you know, what could happen because that's what, that's what the really, um, scary part is, is the things you don't think are going to happen, you know, the cross contamination, that sort of thing. So, you know, for example, we made a decision when he, when we found out about his peanut allergy, that we were going to have no peanut products in our house at all. Of course I had, we did too. I had an older child. Hold on one second. I've got a baby screaming in the background. <laughs> Sorry. I just, I hear him screaming and it's going to wake up the other one. So one <laughs> Sorry. Okay. So preparing for friends, right? Yeah. So, you know, so the first thing I do is I say, you know, so we have a special bag. Once he outgrew his diaper bag, we decided to have um, a bag that was just specifically for his EpiPen and his Benadryl. And so it fits just those two things. Um, and so he, you know, he, it's got a little handle. So he takes this with him everywhere. Right. Um, and so we made the decision to not have any peanut products in our house at all because we didn't want to risk accidental exposure, even though we had an older child and, you know, she loved peanut butter. Um, and so we just, anything with peanuts was, was out. Um, going into other people's homes, of course, it's not that way. So, right. you know, I, I try to explain cross-contamination to people like, you know, he can't have a jelly sandwich because if you dipped your knife into your peanut butter and then you dipped your knife into your jelly to make a sandwich, you can't then just give him a jelly sandwich because there's peanut butter in your jelly. <laughs> right, right. Yeah. And you people don't, and that could have happened by your youngest child four weeks ago that you don't even know. Yeah, yeah. So, so um, you know, just reminding people of those sort of things. And then, you know, I tell them like, he's never had, he's, he's never had peanuts before. Our expected result is anaphylaxis, which means that, you know, his breathing could be compromised. Right. If for some reason you have an issue and you feel like he might've been exposed, then I show him how to use the EpiPen, but I try not to go too overboard. And then I worry, I do, I worry, you know, when he was younger anyway, I would worry a lot. Um, The great thing um, and the thing that I would recommend to all parents that have children with peanut allergies is teach your children from a young age how to manage their own allergy because you can't always be with them. You can't always protect them, but if they have the knowledge, they can protect themselves. And we were really diligent about teaching him to read labels. Even before he could read, um, he would ask other people to read the labels for him to check. Oh, good. Yeah. And so I would get, you know, I would have parents say, oh my gosh, you know, you should be so proud of him. He, I I tried to give him goldfish and he said, can you please read the label and make sure there's no peanuts? (laughs) But this is great advice because, you know, I, that's years away for me. And yet I wouldn't even think of that. And I'm so glad we're having this conversation because it is hopefully helping other people, but it's definitely helping me as I'm figuring out at the very beginning stages of navigating. Well, good. I'm, I'm, I'm glad. Thank so, you. So that, that was a big help. Um, and then, you know, just teaching him like not to take food from friends. That's another big one. Like if there's not an adult around when you're on the bus, there's no EpiPen on the bus. He has to go to and from school on the bus with no EpiPen. And I would worry, I would worry about that. Cause I thought all it's going to take is some kid to be like, Hey, you want this Butterfinger? Like, you know, right. right. So, you know, I, I, I made sure to let him know how important it was um, not to take food from friends, not to eat anything, you know, without confirming that it was safe for him. And he's old enough now that he knows what he can and can't have, but he'll still ask me like, you know, if we, if they get something in their stocking that we don't normally buy, he'll come and say, mom, you know, I read this, I don't see any peanuts on the label, but can you look at it and just make sure? So like, he's really conscious good. that you did a good job, mom. Like you nailed it. That's awesome. That's he, like, yes. Yeah. Oh, and he's um, 10 now. So like you're now he's old enough. He gets it. He knows what it means. Yeah. So, and now, you know, we have a toddler now. Um, and so we don't worry as much about 
him because, you know, when there's a baby, the baby's, you know, always the center of attention. Um, so we try to get him to remember his bag when we're going places because we have to get the diaper bag and the sippy cup and, you know, my purse and everything, you know. So I'm, right. I try to make him responsible for remembering to take his EpiPen bag with us. So that has been more of a challenge. I have to stay on top of him. But, um, you know, I can tell you how many times we've left the house and we'll get to the end of the development and I'll say, do you have your EpiPen bag? Oh, I was putting my shoes on and I set it down and I, and I didn't get in that. <laughs> and so I just remind him like, um, you know, it's the one time that we don't have it, that you might need it. And, you know, we don't ever want to risk that. So it doesn't matter how far we got from home, you know, we turn around and we go back and get it. We and always then, get you know, it. We've had a couple tough love situations where, um, we haven't been able, you know, we have forgotten it. We can't go back and I'll say, well, you know what, Levi, you're not going to be able to eat anything while we're gone. And so that's kind of like, you know, it's a, it's a learning thing and it's, right. you know, it is, it is definitely tough love, but I just tell him, you know, it's because I love you and I don't want anything to happen to you. Um, right. And it's not worth risking your safety, you know, if we don't have, if we don't have what we need. So yeah, I, I think that's great. You know, ownership of accountability there. And also it goes beyond that. It's because you love him that you're worried. So, um, we're coming to the end because I don't know how much longer this guy is going to just sit here and chill, staring at the camera like, oh, what is going on? <laughs> um, but yeah, it's way past. We should be two hours into bedtime by now. Um, actually, he kind of looks like he has little hives on his cheek. Oh, great. I don't know what he got exposed to <laughs> on the subject of food allergies. But what is a product right now that you love? Like in your mom world, what is something that you are just rocking right now? Um, I'm loving my air fryer. Um, yeah, me too. I yeah. just got one. <laughs> yeah. I actually got mine last Christmas. So I've been using it for years. So I really thought it was going to be one of those appliances that goes into the cabinet and never comes back out. Um, right. But we loved it so much that it actually stays on our counter all the time. And it's great for kids because, you know, the kids are home now all the time, too, because, you know, the schools are closed and stuff. They can literally throw anything in there and shut that little drawer and turn it on and cook their own food. It's and it just, cooks so much faster. Like, you know what I mean? It's fast and it's crispy. crispy. Yes. Leftovers. Like we got for New Year's Eve, we got some chicken wings. They were better the next day after I threw them in my air fryer because they got so crispy. Yes, they were better leftover than they were the first day. I mean, it's just. I, am, I love that you love that because I am just, I am an air fryer new, I don't even know. I'm trying to get you, I'm so tired. For anyone watching this, it is 920 at night right now. We just worked all day. So my vocabulary is lacking. Yep. But um, I am a novice the air fryer world but we had tonight we had sweet potato fries tomorrow I'm making garlic parmesan zucchini <laughs> because that's the other thing with all the food allergies you know just linking to the air fryer is I cook a lot more from scratch you know it's there's only especially with the peanut allergy um peanut oil for frying and stuff there's one restaurant that I really trust to take the kids to eat out at and that's about it so I've had to get, you know, find my inner chef inside and she likes the air fryer. Oh, well that's <laughs> Did, um, did your allergist say anything specifically about peanut oil to you? No, um, he did not. It's, I mentioned this before we started this interview, but I'll say it so everyone can see. So the allergist appointment was enlightening, but it also was a lot of ambiguity. Um, I feel like I didn't get as many answers as I wanted. And that's not the allergist fault. I think it's just the nature of food allergies. But he said, you know, there are different parts of the peanut. And depending on what part of the peanut your boys are allergic to, like they might be able to do like high temperature or they may be able to digest it. So we have to do more blood work to see what part of the peanut they're allergic to. Okay. So, so yeah, what, what we were told um, when we were going through it with Levi is that the, aller the allergy is to the protein of the food. So peanut oil doesn't contain any protein because it's 100% fat. And so oh. she said peanut oil is okay, um, you know, for him. So things that are cooked in peanut oil will be fine for him. Now, 
this is after having, you know, his testing also. So, you know, right. that may not be the case for everybody, but that was the case for him. And we've never had an issue with peanut oil. Again, we chose not to tell people that um, when we're, you know, explaining things and teach, you know, telling people what he can and can't have or whatever. I've had people say, oh, okay, I, I, well, I know that's fried in peanut oil, so we won't give it to them. And I go, okay, thank you. <laughs> well, it's safer. Why? You know what I mean? Like just across the board, even if it's not the most risky, why risk it? Because I just think it's, I, I feel it's better to give people less information so they can remember the important things rather than having them try to decipher on their own what's, you know, what's important and what's not. So we did the, the same thing when we found out, because he ended up outgrowing all everything except for the peanut allergy by the time he was like two. And so my husband, um, you know, when we found out he could have tree nuts, um, was like, no, I don't want him having tree nuts. I don't want people to know he can have tree nuts. I don't, you know, because they might think that he can have certain type, you know, certain types of nuts. They might accidentally give him a peanut. And so, and, and, and generally, um, we don't separate, you know, like I'll just go, you know, I'm pretty easy going most of the time when it comes to stuff. So I go along with it. But again, in trying to keep a healthy diet, I really felt like I wanted my kids, I wanted them to have like almonds and stuff. Like that's a good, right. a good snack. Like I'm giving up all the nuts. So, and he didn't want him to have them at all. Well, I started giving him to him and not telling him. <laughs> <laughs> Is he better not watch this video? Tony's husband, turn it off right now. Don't watch the rest. That's funny. And, and then, so he was re he was really mad at me when he when he found out. But I was like, you know, I'm sorry. I just made an executive decision that I think this is what's best for him. So you were well, also nuts <laughs> are healthy. Nuts are healthy. They're one of the healthiest proteins. And you know, I don't know if everyone can see from watching this, but Tony's very healthy. You know, she takes very good care of herself and her family. So I get that. And I'm hoping this one, Jimmy, this is say hi, Jim, Jim. Yeah, I'm really tired. Um, he had almonds. He came up on the almond register too. So I'm worried they're worried about more than just peanuts on him. And that makes me so sad because I love almond milk. <laughs> I love almond milk, but we're not drinking it right now. Yeah. We're drinking oat milk right now. Okay. That's yeah. where I've come. Oat milk and ripple. Pea protein milk are the only milks. Oat milk is thick. Yeah. But you're not spending coffee. Oh, also, really? I just, if I mix it in coffee enough, it's fine. But all right. So we're coming to the end. We've been, this has actually gone almost an hour. Whoa. Oh, That's good though. It's good information. <laughs> um, my last question is, what are you grateful for today? Oh gosh. What am I not grateful for? Um, <laughs> I, I mean, so I have a, a teenager and a, a 10 year old and a two year old. And so I am just so, so grateful, you know, that they're all healthy and thriving. Um, and, you know, we originally had only planned to have two children. And then at the last minute, it was <laughs> kind of a now or never thing if we're going to have one more. So um, I was 36. No, 30. 35. Um, and yeah, so we had Bodhi and he's just so much fun. I mean, I like going through all the toddler stuff again with him is just, it's even better this time. I feel like, <laughs> well, you know, it's you, I, I, you know, I'm a little envious of that because I just did it all in one big clump. And there's part of me that like, Know, maybe like three or four years we could do it again when everyone's a little older so you're enjoying it I, I am I am so enjoying it um and then of course you know w we work from home now which is mm -hmm. great um you know when you know especially with the kids being home for, for school and stuff not you know I still work like a dog but I get you know I don't have to drive you know to do it and um it gives me some more flexibility so sometimes after I put um, Bodhi down for bed. If I have more work to do, I can, you know, jump on. It's just really convenient. So I am grateful. Yeah. I'm grateful for that as well. Um, and, you know, life is good. So everybody's healthy. Can't really, can't complain. I love it. Well, happy new year. You know, we're kicking off 2021. 
Thank you for being my first interview of this year. I appreciate it. Thanks for having me. And um, I'm glad that I got to share some of my experience. Um, it's definitely, it's a lot. So, you know, but it will all be okay. Like you'll get, you'll get through it. You'll have those moments where you feel like it's just too overwhelming. Oh, one more thing, product wise, sun butter, which is made from sunflower seeds. Yes. Really yes. I haven't tried it. That so. was their birthday cake. So their birthday cake is at, the, before I knew they could have a little dairy and a little soy, um, was just banana, gluten-free oatmeal and sun butter cups. And I baked it into a pie. <laughs> Oh, and they liked it. And then they could have it for breakfast the next day because it was oatmeal and banana and some butter. Yeah, that's, that is interesting. Well, you have to share yeah. your, um, your recipes with me and your air fryer. If you, if you find any good ones. Will do, will do.